Is Western society collapsing in on itself? In recent years, it appears that one upheaval follows another. We've had COVID-19, we've had Black Lives Matter protests. Are these the signs that uh, we're improving or it's the society is collapsing? Is this the end of racism or is it the end of law? Well, Steve, look, I know you're not advocating this, but getting rid of the law and mob rule and ultimately even government solutions are not going to work because this really is a matter of the heart. have a look and then you can give me a reaction to this video. This is uh, a lady responding or answering why in uh, Minneapolis they're going to defund the police. And yes, you heard that right. Listen to this. We have a state action against our police department, which gives us legal mechanisms in the very short term. You know, there's lessons from all over the country, all over the world that we're looking to, yeah. um, to take immediate steps while we work toward building the systems that we would need to imagine that that future. Do you understand that the word dismantle or police free also makes some people nervous? For instance, what if in the middle of the night my home is broken into? Who do I call? Yes, I mean, I, I hear that loud and clear from a lot of my neighbors and I know and, and myself, too. And I know that that comes from a place of privilege because for those of us for whom the system is working, I think we need to step back and imagine what it would feel like to already live in that reality where calling the police may mean more harm is done. And I think even the CNN interviewer was going, what are you actually saying? Because I hear that and that doesn't sound like it's going to end in a happy place. No. And uh, it's interesting because in Chicago, uh, two weekends ago, they've had the worst day of violence, 18 people murdered and 18 black lives gone. Uh, and that's what happens when the police have been taken out of things. And the police were just completely overstretched. They had 65,000 phone calls to deal with. Normally, it's 15,000. So they're utterly overwhelmed. But get what that woman was saying. She was actually saying, for you and I, it's a privilege for us to have the police. So in order to get rid of our privilege, we need to get rid of the police. Uh, Steve, I'm assuming that's not a background you've got there. That, that is your house, isn't it? It is my house. Well, I think by that woman's logic, we need to burn down your house because we need to show you what it's like to live as homeless. You know, otherwise you're, you're operating from a place of privilege. That is exactly what she, what she is suggesting. Yeah. Look, I, I think that I, it sends a shiver down my spine hearing her say that because it's completely naive about human nature. But... Why are these protests happening? Do you, do you agree with them? Can you see why people think the police are the problem? Yeah, because in some instances, unjust policing is a problem. And yes, there are difficult, but they're not the problem. The, the situation I mentioned in Chicago, it wasn't the police that went around and shot 18 people dead. So there's problems of poverty, there's problems of incarceration, there's problems of racial discrimination. I think in Australia, we have got uh, an awful history in terms of the indigenous people, and there is still significant discrimination and mistreatment uh, for indigenous people, but it's just not as black and white as, uh, as people suggest. So I agree with the protests, and I don't agree with them. I don't think you should be tearing down statues, and I don't think the solutions are as simple as they say. Yeah. So why do we need police then? Obviously, we've seen the bad of it. Um, Minneapolis police force has had a bad reputation for a long time and it's come to a head. Why do we need police? Because without the police, I absolutely believe that what we would end up with is some kind of mob rule. Uh, your militias would have great fun. Uh, I think your wealthy people would be able to afford armed protection. But the people who would really suffer are the poor because the police are there to enforce the law, and they're meant to be there to enforce it for everybody. Although the way that they've been going recently, I think they're becoming more, more political and more selective in how they do their policing. But I do not want to live in a country without police, and I suspect you wouldn't either. No, I don't. I, 
uh, Sarajevo, the Sudan, and Liberia spring to mind. <laughs> but but what about laws? Don't don't uh, when we think about laws, do laws just not benefit the rich? That's one claim that's been put, especially on that privilege line. Yeah, I think ironically, if you take Christianity out of the system. Because in Western liberal democracies, one of the absolutely founding things of Western liberal democracy is this, is that everyone is equal under the law. The um, many, many other societies have had the view that the king is the law. In other words, that the most powerful and the richest people are the law. If we are going to remove Christianity, how are we going to have equality under the law? And I think we, we see that. So, for example, I've just been reading about your wonderful fair city that the mayor has said that 300 people are not allowed to gather to do a protest march this weekend. However, he's basically not going to punish them if they do, and he's advising social distancing. However, if you and just your mega church of 300 plus people <laughs> met together, then you'd be arrested and you'd be charged. Now, that's what I call discrimination. That's where the law is, has it, and, they, and therefore what law does, if it's not applied equally, it's, if you have law which is applied to everybody, then that's fantastic. The, I, I heard um, a, an African-American pastor say this, the opposite of poverty is not wealth. The opposite of poverty is justice. Yeah. And I fully fully understand that. I want to live in a country with justice and the best thing for the poor is justice. Mm. Do you, and you can see why, how does Christianity benefit that? Because we're saying it's an equalizer in some respects, isn't it? In many respects, it all are equal before God. So that must mean they're all equal before each other. Yeah, it, it, it's the very, very simple um, equation of what's your foundation for equality? So um, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. At many levels, human beings are not equal. So you and I are not equal. You know, you're better looking than me. Um, I'm, I've got a better more sense of humor. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're more intelligent. Yeah, I mean, I just feel, I, I mean, I'm not your equal. But in Christian terms, I am your equal because I'm made in the image of God, just as you are made in the image of God. So where and would you I go to in the Bible for this, David? Where would you? I would just go to Genesis uh, 1. All right. uh, Genesis 1, in the beginning, he made male and female in his image. And that's why, for example, I find misogyny to be wrong. That's why when in the 1920s, science taught us that indigenous people were less worthy, and it did, it, because they were less developed, less evolved, and people went out hunting indigenous people, literally. That's why people who stood up to that were Christians who believed that all indigenous people are made in the image of God, as are all white people, as are all Chinese people, as are disabled people, you know, whatever. It's, it's, a, it's a fundamental, it's a foundational thing. And I don't think that uh, a non-Christian view has that foundation. All it has is what is the current zeitgeist. And the zeitgeist at the moment is to shout Black Lives Matter and tear down statues. But that's not a basis for having an equal and just society. No. So that's interesting. We're heading in interesting directions of interesting times. Um, I was going. I think I will mention a passage, Romans one. We don't have time to go into it, but just simply to say that we've become a society that's turning away from what God has said, uh, and we're reaping the fruit of that. I also want to mention a book called Oz Guinness's uh, Free People's Suicide, and I wrote an article on that as well. But next week we're going to do something different. We're going to look at Lord of the Flies. And if you don't know what Lord of the Flies is, then Steve, you go away, read the book, watch the film. I'm sure you do. But we're going to look at that because there's been an interesting new take on that. I'm going to say goodbye and you can say goodbye from your Western hideout. Yeah, our, our Western hideout where we're living on an island with a whole bunch of people with a flag and we're creating our own laws, Western Australia. <laughs> All right. God bless, guys. See you.